Hello everyone. So, I recorded a video and um, thought it had worked out fine, only to find that it didn't actually record properly and the video was a corrupt mess. Rather than redo what I did last episode, which was pretty similar to what I did the episode before that, I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead a little bit and show you the fruits of our labor. So the biggest change I made is uh, over here in Bricklayer, Previously, if we met a condition, we just added one to our bid. So if we, you know, if, if it was above the height we required, we said bid plus plus. Now what we're doing is we're actually weighting it so that the more the more it is below or above that, the better. So for example, above mountain value, if you say the, that the mountain value has to be 0.5 or higher, then if it's 0.6, you add a tiny amount to your bid, and if it's one, you add a large amount to your bid. The only time I break that rule is with the above height. Above height, uh, the closer it is to the height you specify, the better, um, because I don't want to have mountain tops that turn into the top of a uh, lava lamp or whatever, and you, you don't want it to you don't want to, to siphon out and spire out into a larger and larger structure. Uh, I've also added a couple of these above mountain value, below mountain value, but I've also done squared mountain values and square rooted mountain values and blob values which will allow us to control the uh, the spread of those because um, uh, if you square it, it goes closer to zero and if you square root it, it goes closer to one. So that'll be useful for creating particular shapes. The, what I was doing at the end of the last episode, what I stopped on is I was trying to make hills work properly uh, and I was having a hard time with it because this method isn't really used uh, isn't really ideal for generating hills, but it is cool because you can generate some really neat stuff. And so here you can see what we've got is a landscape that has uh, been eroded underneath because of the way that my hill structure works, um, and that is to say poorly. But we still have some floating hills. You can see a floating hill here. So what I'm going to do this episode is I'm going to go ahead and try and make the hills actually work out. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to go ahead and make the underhill an extremely clear color, green or red, whatever the hell it is, just so that I can tell when we're doing an underhill and when we're doing a normal hill. And you can see that here, our underhill is not at all under the hill. It is, in fact, on top of the hill. And the reason for that is because of our weighting. So you can see that for the hill top, we say if it's above squared mountain of 0.6, and down here we say if it's above squared mountain of 0.4, well obviously it would be further above 0.4 than 0.6. The question is why isn't this weight taking effect? Because that weight of 0.2 versus the weight of 0.5 should really reduce the value. Um, and it would appear that the bit is actually being multiplied by the weight. So let's go ahead and change this to 0.01 and see what happens. Uh, 0.01. Alright, so here we have it working properly. There is the underhill, and here is the top of the hill. That's what we want it to look like. But we want to allow for much higher mountains, so that's why we've got it specified to, to go up so high. Um, so here we've got nothing but a giant mound of underhill, and then over there we've got more underhill. So we're still facing the same problem where the underhill is um, winning the fight between it and the hill itself. But we can up this to like five just to see whether or not uh, it works out. And you can see that it it uh, that's ice. That's not what we're looking for. The flatlands are a slightly more common terrain than the mountains within the hills. The other thing we might do is we can create two biomes one for the hills leading up to the mountains and one for the mountains proper and we can stage them such that uh, the mountains will happen surrounded by hills um, which is a good way to do it uh, if you plan to use mountain values uh, by the way the mountain value is the slow value and the blob value is the fast value so these are blob value pieces and these are mountain value pieces and you can see how the mountain value pieces are much larger so you can use that to control which land formations you'd like to be large and which you'd like to be small. And uh, these ice sheets are quite large because we're using the mountain value rather than the blob value. Um, I'm trying to find a place that's not flatlands, and it's not really working out. 
flatlands as far as the eye can see here. Um, uh, no, that's still flatlands. Ah, there we are. Well, this certainly is an interesting structure, and it looks more like what we'd like. Um, but we still don't have the right issue. The We really want the top of the hill to win, uh, whereas no matter what we set the weight to, it really doesn't. So it's pretty clear that there's something fundamentally different about this, and uh, I think what we may want to do is lower it. That might help. So over here, you can see that it's a little bit, a little bit misleading because this surface here is actually hill top, even though it's on the ground. Um, and you can see that we've got like a donut shape, where we've got the the base of the hill actually radically uh, outside. And the reason for that is because it's much less, it's above 0.4 rather than 0.6. If we were to change it to exactly 0.6, we should now see that the underhill is precisely the same, except five blocks lower. Um, so it might actually be a little bit too rare now. I don't see it at all. So the whole point was I wanted it to show up here, beneath this brick, and there's no underhill happening. Um, and that's probably just because the weight is so much lower. Now let's go ahead and make this above 8. Sorry. I think that the better approach would be to have separate hills and mountains, um, which is probably what I'll have to have to do. Yeah. I think that there's... I can't figure out how to do it. I'm, and if you play around with it and you find a setting where it works, then by all means let me know. Uh, but one of the core problems is that above height is actually uh, still positive even when you're at like height 50. It's just not very positive. And that means that above squared mountain, uh, will allow you to actually make up for that. So you can get like 0.8 out of above squared mountain. Um, so even if your height is only, even if your height is 50 and it's only giving you 0.0001, you still have enough to trigger a bid. Uh, so what we may have to do is we have to change these mechanics just a touch so that we have uh, int bid, uh, int tribs matched equals zero. And what we'll do is we will add, um, we will add a tribs matched if it is proper, if it actually works. So if uh, y is greater than attributes. So now we're putting in the piece that I took out. Brilliant, huh? So this is what we used to do with the bid plus plus, except for now we're doing it with um, uh, we're doing it with an absolute match rather than a... Uh, that doesn't actually count towards the bid weight. We just want to make sure that everything works. So this way you will always have... If any of your attributes fail, then the bid fails even if you have one attribute that succeeds wildly. And that point will that will allow us to really restrict uh, things a little bit later on, like a little bit later on, meeting in two or three minutes. Uh, here's where it gets a little annoying. You know what? I'm doing this wrong. I uh, sorry about this. This is not something I've done before, so it's something I'm not terribly familiar with.
So I'm creating uh, a layer between bid and um, uh, this goes here between the bid and the actual attribute doing the bidding. And down here we say if my bid is greater than zero, bid plus uh, bid plus equals my bid and um, attributes matched plus plus. And then down here we say if attributes matched is less than then return zero. And that should make it so that we can uh, uh, create failure conditions. Now we've got the exact same thing we had before, and the reason for that is, oh, we don't. Oh, we do, yeah. And the reason for that is because we haven't added any failure conditions. But you see how we've got this floating mountain? Let's go ahead and add in some stuff that will keep it from floating. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to have this above height, and we're also going to have a below height. Um, in fact, we could have a below height right from the start. Um, I could have tried that first, actually. I was going to create an upper cap where, you know, it was above height 20, or above height 8 and below height 20 or whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can find some hills. I really like how the flatlands turned out, though. They're really interesting looking. Uh, here we are. So we definitely still have a problem with floating hills. That was just like a tiny little... The problem there wasn't actually that our hill thing failed. The problem there was that the hill biome was so tiny that it didn't have a chance to actually grow. Here's a larger hill biome. But again, it's floating above the flatlands biome. So right now what we're seeing is we're seeing our hill biome actually being usurped by our flatlands biome. Um, so this ground is flatlands ground, but we have a little bit of hill biome like hovering directly above it, um, which is not really, that's kind of an interesting thing to happen. It's not really what I had intended. Uh, there we are. No? No, that's still flatland. No, this must be hill. I don't know. There's ice in it. There shouldn't be any ice in our... Now this is it. So here... No, this is still... I don't really know what's going on. Well, just before I go, let's go ahead and change this to 30 and 40. And just see how it turns out. And then you can create biomes on your own. I'm probably going to go ahead and create a few more, but I'm going to probably do them off stage. Um, I don't really need you to sit through and watch me create the biomes. Uh, you can create really interesting biomes by just playing around. So I recommend you do that. Try different uh, different values. And remember that the mountains, the mountain value is a slow value. And, um, oh, that's a hole. The mountain value is a slow value. And the uh, um, and the blob value is the fast value. So if you want to create small things, use the blob value. And if you want to create big things, use the mountain value. There we are. That's like what I had wanted it to be. That's more like it. Um, although right now the ground itself is pretty crap because it's just flat. But as you can see, you can in fact create pretty interesting structures. Uh, so I recommend that you go ahead and play with it. I'll put it up for download, and I'm sorry that I basically skipped an episode. Um, it was like a 20-minute episode, and uh, Cam Studio choked on it and died, which is why I record in such a low frame rate, by the way. On my computer, it plays quite smoothly, um, but I record it at a low frame rate because otherwise I tend to uh, go over the limit that Cam Studio can handle. Well, that's it for today and uh, probably another one tomorrow, uh, depending on whether or not I create more biomes. So play around with it. Create some cool biomes. Maybe show some pictures if you do so. Uh, and uh, look forward to seeing you again for the next episode.